What's up everybody? Well, continuing on my recent venture into more video game content, like with my Resident Evil videos, I decided to tackle another video game series that is near and dear to my heart, and by far, in my opinion, the best of the comic book hero video games. That is the Batman Arkham series. So we've got six games. Yes, I've actually played all of them. The PS Vita, uh, Blackgate one, I played the VR game, and all of the main series games. So we have a pretty decent list here that is very passionate amongst fans. I've watched a couple of rankings, kind of getting an idea of where a lot of other people fall in these rankings to see how controversial my list might be. It might not be that controversial for a change. We shall see. So starting off at number six is Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate. Now this is a PS Vita exclusive. This is the only game in this list that I did not complete. And it's not that it was a bad game, I'm just not really a mobile gamer very much, so even when I had the PS Vita, which I had for my last job, so that when I'm sitting around waiting for concrete to be poured, I could be playing some Uncharted or some Batman, it just never really compelled me much. To give them credit where credit is due, because there's not a single game on this list that I would say is a bad game, they do a pretty good job at taking the integral mechanics to the Batman Arkham series and transporting it over to a side-scrolling mobile game. So I think that they do a really good job at translating the gameplay to what they have as far as constraints with the PS Vita. Um, there's a decent little storyline going on here with like the introduction of Catwoman, how Batman and Catwoman first met because this is continuing off of Batman Arkham Origins. But at the same time, it's not as fun, as compelling, or as enjoyable as the full-on 3D gameplay of things that were on the PS3 or the PS4. And I also don't really care for the comic book cell shaded type of uh, cutscenes. That doesn't, that's never really worked for me in any video game. Even games that I have loved, like the first two infamous games, I always hated the fact that they had those like comic book cell shaded storytelling. So, anyway, this is a pretty good mobile game that's probably extremely hard to find because the PS Vita came and went. But for me, it is the one that I enjoyed the least on this list at number six. Number five for me is going to be Batman Arkham VR. Now, I will acknowledge fully that this game is basically a glorified demo, but it's also a game that only costs 20 bucks. So it's not like I paid $60, got through it in 15 minutes and went, what the hell was that rock steady? Batman Arkham VR is essentially just a little side chapter in between Batman Arkham City and Batman Arkham Knight, if I remember correctly. But what I loved about this was uh, mostly because of all my excitement when I first got the PlayStation VR and I was playing things like Resident Evil Biohazard and some of the demos that they had that was just unbelievable what they were able to do with modern graphics and VR. When you play Batman Arkham VR, you literally get to become Batman. Now you don't get to do a lot. It's not like you're flying around Gotham City in VR. It's essentially just you in certain rooms being able to interact with everything around you, like shoot batarangs at targets or go and look up little character models in the bat computer. And you go through certain storylines, like probably the most memorable segment is whenever you're going down to help Robin and you're in this little cage and then all of a sudden Killer Croc just jumps out of nowhere and scares the living shit out of you in full on VR where he's right here. Right. Let's get you out of here. This was just a extremely memorable experience that if they could ever harness enough time and development to make a full-fledged game like this, my god, you want to talk about a day one purchase for me. Number 4 and I did struggle with this a little bit. The next four are very hard to rank. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, the first two were very easy to place for me. These next four, it's kind of like the Uncharted series where I can understand anybody's argument for which one is the best. But for me, number four is gonna be Batman Arkham Origins. Now, I really enjoyed this when it first came out and I probably would still enjoy it if I played it all the way through again. I've revisited every single one of these games with the exceptions of VR. But I only played about the first hour and a half of Batman Arkham Origins to kind of, you know, refresh myself on how these games played. And this game feels very strange amongst the Rocksteady games because it's developed by a different developer. I believe W Games Montreal or something like that. They're going to be doing another one, supposedly. But it feels like a Batman Arkham game, but it just feels slightly different. There's something slightly off about it that holds it back for me. It's kind of like 
To give you a good old Sean Chandler food analogy, it's kind of like if your mom has this classic recipe that you love and you try your best at home to recreate it and you get pretty damn close, but it ain't quite mama's potatoes. That's kind of like what Batman Arkham Origins is for me, where it's got everything you want from a Batman game. It's got the, you know, the Arkham City style traversal where you go around Gotham City. It has all of the fighting mechanics, all of the gadgets, all of the flying mechanics. It feels exactly like you would want a follow-up from Batman Arkham City to feel, but it just feels scaled back somehow. The environments aren't as fleshed out, the graphics aren't quite as good, the it's, it's not quite as fluid all the way through. Now that being the negatives getting out of the way, the positives with this game is that it has probably some of the best boss battles in the entire series. If I was to do a video of top five Batman Arkham series boss battles, I wouldn't be surprised if three of those five came from Batman Arkham Origins because they kick ass. The Deathstroke fight, the uh, Bane fight, the Firefly fight, series best stuff. So which really excites me if WB Games Montreal comes back and does another one for this current console generation. I think they're gonna do even better. But the boss battles were great. I love the storyline of kind of seeing how Batman in his early days was developing his relationship with Gordon and with some of these uh, bosses for the very first time, some of these classic Batman enemies. But I also like the fact that Batman as a character in this, to me, is the most interesting of any of the Batman Arkham games because he's young, he's angrier, he's a little bit more vicious, a little bit more reckless, and he's not quite that stoic, you know, like stone-faced Batman that we get in the Batman Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and especially Arkham Knight, where he's just straight as an arrow. No deviating from the Batman rules. This one's a little bit more reckless. I like that. I think it's a little more interesting. Uh, one final negative for this as well is that there was that whole infamous twist where you have the full-on marketing that Black Mask is going to be the main villain, and then it turns out to be another Batman vs. Joker game. So, I really enjoy this. I think that it doesn't deserve anywhere near the hate that it gets, but it is definitely inferior to the Rocksteady games at number four. Number three, now here's where we start to get hate comments because these next three games are considered perfection by most Batman fans and most video game fans. So even more so than the top four, the top three is where everybody starts to pull out their fists if you don't pick the one that they like. Number three for me is going to be Batman Arkham Asylum. Now, don't get me wrong. When this game came out, it was revolutionary. It was quite literally a game changer, no pun intended. This was like the best thing you possibly could have given to Batman and comic book fans for a video game. This is what made everybody look and go, wow. Now we've finally started to harness how you can make great superhero movies, and this game just showed us how to make great superhero games. Love it for the small kind of confined story that it's going for in confined environments, it's pretty much damn near perfection. But it's that small confined sense of it that does hold it back for me because I am much more, I'm much more of a person that enjoys exploring. I like exploring Arkham City, exploring Gotham City. And when I go back to try to play Arkham Asylum for all the wonderful things that it does, the fact that I'm stuck in Arkham Asylum and stuck on this island without a whole lot of exploration and just kind of really small rooms and buildings, it does feel a little bit restrained for me in retrospect. So just as it's aged, I just feel like that they've perfected it so much that Arkham Asylum does look a little bit inferior in comparison. And not everybody's going to agree with that, but moving on from that, the positives of this game, again, boss battles, the storyline, the way that they just introduced all of these gameplay mechanics like the fighting system and how you interact with these different gadgets and use different gadgets, not only in fighting, but exploration and puzzle solving. I actually really like the story in this too, where you kind of get locked into the asylum with Joker and him and Harley have let loose everybody. Uh, I also don't really care for the way that it ends. That's another thing that brings it back for me. Now, I'm really hard on final boss fights. I haven't done a ton of video game videos for you to know that about me, but when a final boss fight disappoints me, it leaves the game on a sour note for me just a little bit, no matter how great the game is. And Batman Arkham Asylum is one of those games. When you get the Titan version of Joker, I've always found that to be stupid. I've always thought it didn't really make sense for the character, didn't really make sense for the game itself. It's a repetitive boss fight because we fought Titans the entire game all the way through. So it, it does end on a slightly disappointing note, but again, fantastic game. These top three might as well be 10 out of 10s for me for the most part. So it's very hard for me to rank, but number three is Batman Arkham Asylum. Now these top two 
I have gone back and forth on for years. Every time that I replay one, I feel like I like that one better than I replay the other one and I like that one better. This is a very, very hard decision for me. But luckily on my most recent playthrough, when I was preparing for this ranking video, I played all of these games and Arkham City and Arkham Knight are the only two that I played in its entirety. Replayed the whole game. There were some things that stuck out about one of these games that did not stick out to me the first couple of times that I played it that held it back to number two for me. So number two is going to be Batman Arkham Knight. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this game. And this, just like Batman Arkham Origins, I don't understand anywhere near the level of hate that this game gets. I think the fact that you have people calling this the worst Batman Arkham game or a bad game just shows how fucking spoiled we are with how incredible some of these games have been because this is a kick-ass game that does have some very notable flaws, but to me, even with the flaws, it's damn near a 10 out of 10 game for all the great things that it does. First and foremost, I think this has bar none the best story of any of the Batman Arkham games. It's engaging, it's dark, there's huge stakes, there's a lot of personal stuff going on with the character of Batman. I love Scarecrow as the main villain and the way that he's kind of visualized in this with the voice of John Noble is fantastic. I love the villain of the Arkham Knight. And yes, I do understand the complaints about Rocksteady and how much they kind of boasted about this being an original character and trying to throw everybody off. They kind of did the J.J. Abrams Star Trek Into Darkness move and most Batman fans knew exactly who this character was going to be either going into the game or by the time they get halfway through the game, they're like, okay, well now it's obvious that it's this guy. Um, and I'll just say, yes, it's Jason Todd. It's the Red Hood. It's a new version of the Red Hood that is the Arkham Knight. But... With that set aside, I think that the storyline involving Arkham Knight and involving his vendetta against Batman and, against, and involving the mystery of the reveal of the character is done extremely well. Yes, once you get to the segment where you're having these little fever dream, fear toxin kind of flashbacks of the Jason Todd murder, if you're a Batman fan and you know the lore, it becomes blatantly obvious who the Arkham Knight is. But up to that point, it's a great mystery. And even at that point, it's a very deeply personal story where even if you figure it out, you're going, wow, this is going to be interesting how this plays out. And I think that it's very interesting how it plays out with the ultimate confrontation where he reveals his face and you have this very kind of war-torn Jason Todd who's been tortured for a year plus where you totally sympathize with this guy and you almost understand his vendetta towards Batman and you're not necessarily emotional, but you're definitely invested in Batman's turmoil with trying to bring him back. Stand down, Robin. Don't call me that. It's not who I am. Those are series defining moments for me. Now you got the big one, the Batmobile. And this is the part where it held it back to number two for me, where previously I actually really enjoyed the Batmobile. I think that the way that they create the Batmobile and the way that they utilize it gameplay wise is fantastic. I think that they put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into it. And unfortunately, they put so many blood, sweat, tears into it that they kind of made it too much of a main part of the game. Because this time upon replay, I was like, why the fuck am I doing another tank battle? <laughs> <laughs> when I first beat this game, I thought the Batmobile was awesome. I didn't understand the criticism. I was like, this plays great. This is very cool. This is new. This is different. This makes this game stand out. Upon replay, I got so tired of almost every single middle point of an arc that I was going for turns into a tank battle or a siege battle or something involving the Batmobile to where I was like, my God, you're just fluffing out the game with tank battles. To the point where, and this is what really tipped it over the edge in the number two for me, where you have major boss battles that are just reduced to a tank battle. You have two different fights with the Arkham Knight at the very end where, well really you have three main fights with the Arkham Knight right before the reveal, and two of them are in the Batmobile. One of them is Predator takedowns and stuff like that whenever he's been revealed. The other two is a full-on tank battle where you're just trying to sneak behind him and shoot him. And the other one is when you're driving the Batmobile and trying to work him into some bombs, which I actually kind of like that one, but there's way too much utilization and focus on the Batmobile and not Batman stuff. And so the point where even when you get side stories, where you get the return, the final return of Deathstroke, and 
in Batman Arkham Origins, it had one of the greatest boss battles of this entire series in this hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then you get to this one, the final game, and it's a, it's a fucking tank battle. <laughs> Why? I understand that criticism completely. The tank battle stuff, way too much. It fluffs out the game, it gets frustrated, and it gets monotonous. That's the one thing that holds it back from number two for me, or from number one for me. But this is a fantastic game that I think story-wise caps off this series very well and has some very interesting arcs that I think are done extremely well and I enjoy it. I think it's the best story of all of them and it's sitting here at number two. And goddamn, there was a lot of Riddler trophies. I forgot that one. But number one, as you can see by process of elimination, is Batman Arkham City. This is like the perfect Batman game to me. It has everything that I love about Batman Arkham Knight and everything that I love about Batman Arkham Asylum, but just utilized perfectly. There's very little negative that I can say about this game. It's actually paced extremely well. It's not fluffed out like Batman Arkham Knight was with the tank battles. A fully realized open world with a section of Gotham City just harnessed off at its side as Arkham City. Boss battles that are really good for the most part. A lot of side missions that are really good. Some of them are like rivaling some of the main storylines. Like even though the boss battle itself isn't as great, I love the whole build up to the dead shot one, for example, whenever you're finding these people that have been shot or like you'll hear a gunshot in the distance and you have to go explore and find out who got killed. That stuff is just brilliant. I love the storytelling in this where it weaves a lot of different comic villains from the Batman universe together to tell this big storyline involving the Joker and you know, is he or is he not dying from the Titan? And you have Ra's al Ghul thrown in there. You have the whole plot of Victor, or Victor Strange, Hugo Strange in there where he's find out the, found out the identity of Batman at the beginning. You have so many things going on at once that as a movie, this would be something that would be considered as having too many plot lines, but the way that they work it all together in this game, it actually all comes together in a really nice little package to where nothing feels superfluous. Nothing feels like it was tacked in. Nothing feels like it shouldn't have been there. It was distracting from the main storyline. You have a lot of different Batman lore coming together to tell a very new, unique story that is just awesome. Gameplay, even better than Batman Arkham Asylum. It has everything that you loved about that, but expanded the way that you traverse around Gotham City and you use your grappling gun to kind of shoot through. All that stuff is great. Even when you play Arkham Knight and you get used to the Batmobile, you don't miss the Batmobile when you're playing Arkham City because it's much more of a confined version of Gotham City. It's just an awesome game. It's a perfect Batman game. It's a perfect superhero game. And it just has anything that you would want as a Batman fan. So it comes in at number one. So what do you guys think of the Batman Arkham series? Do you disagree with this list? Like I said, these are fantastic games. So I understand anybody who might have my number four at number one or number one at number five or anything like that. I can understand most arguments for this. So let me know down below what your thoughts are on the Arkham City games. What are some other video game series that you want to see me do some rankings on? I have an Uncharted one coming up with Sean Chandler at some point in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Uh, I'm also starting to kind of put the pieces together to maybe do a Metal Gear Solid one. I just have to revisit a couple of those games because that's one of my favorite series of all time. Let me know down below what you want and I will do my best to work it into my schedule. Please, as always, guys, like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button. And remember, as always, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.